So we're gonna be working on a hypopigmented scar, which means that the actual scar has healed lighter than the surrounding skin and tissue. This is probably one of the most common scenarios that I get and definitely the best place to start when you're getting into paramedical tattooing. It's really quite simple. All right, so this is my client's third visit. So she's had two healed results come back and we're just finessing these little bit of details. I like to always see them back, even if I'm not going to do anything so I can make sure I can get it as close to perfect as I can. So here you can see we're going to be working on just these last little spots. Right over there, we still have a little bit of light and then in this area as well. Just finishing up those little spots. So you can see they're really minor, but still important as a camouflage client to get the best results we can. So what you're looking at is my tray setup. So first off, we have our wireless rotary machine. I'm a big fan of these, especially when you're working all over body parts, you're not dragging cords around. I'll be using a nine curved Magnum today. I've already mixed my formula and I'm gonna show you how that looks against her skin right away. And again, all those formulas are included in our courses, so it takes the guesswork out of things. So what I've done is I've created that custom formula and recipe to match my client's skin. And what I'm gonna do is just fold it over like I have so when I'm holding it up, I feel like I'm going to get that perfect flow and mix over these lighter areas. All right, let's get this area prepped and cleaned with some alcohol. I like to clean the whole area just in case there's anything I see as I'm working that I might want to touch. Okay, we're good to go. So we're gonna get started. I have my machine set at six volts and my needle hang is at 1.5. With this area being closer to the bone and there's not a lot of fat underneath, you have to be careful not to work too aggressively because it will really hold onto the color. So I'm gonna pick up a bit of my ink right now. And I'm going to start just in this little area here. And I'm just gonna do a couple wispy strokes. So I can just check how my color saturation and hold is going on in there. Perfect. All right, so I have those little pixels that I'd like. And I'm going in a few different directions here so I can get a nice seamless blend. I tend to always push the color in. It's just a habit I have from feeling like I'm still taking advantage of any little micro openings in the skin that I could get color into staying into. Now, because this is her third treatment, I have a good understanding as to how this has healed on her and what types of techniques have been successful. So today I'm gonna be finishing up. And when we get her after photos, we will be able to show you the very beginning and then the very end. Those are always so great and that's what you guys wanna be using for your marketing. That's how you're gonna be selling these types of services in your business. One of the important things to remember is that you don't wanna see bleeding when you're doing camouflage. And the reason for that is the bleeding is going to change how this heals. So the hemoglobin in blood will actually change the way this color heals, which makes sense, but I don't think it's often something that we think about or have been taught in the past. So 
So as far as sensitivity, how are you feeling from one to 10? 10 being the worst. One. A one, amazing. So these should not really be painful procedures. Also, that means typically no numbing. Okay, we're done that one and we're gonna be moving on. So again, I'm making a little test patch here so I can see the deposit of color so that I know how much more I'm gonna have to add, which I can see those little pixels and that indicates to me that I do have the depth and the speed correct and then I'm gonna continue on with my camouflage. So if you can imagine this pattern that I'm doing is almost like a North Star. I wanna kinda of come at it at different angles so it allows me to get a seamless camo in there without, being, without it being streaky. And in these areas, I work in small little sections and that's because I wanna have good control over where where I am going. And again, I can start to see it's getting a little red, so I'm gonna move on. That means I have worked that area enough. Now, if areas are just getting small and tiny, you guys, you can still do, I like a little bit of pointillism, to be honest, because it just, will allow me to just put these little baby dots in there. You don't wanna do the whole camouflage like that, but with tiny little areas that are skinny, you don't necessarily need to change your needle configuration unless it was a big area and it was something that was gonna really make a difference in the details. You'll find too the sensitivity on someone, like when I'm working, like I'm very close to her shin bone and in some spots right on it, that is gonna be more sensitive. So you just wanna be careful with that. Awesome. Okay, I see another little one on her shin here. So with this one, just really lightly, guys, because I'm right on the bone. So I can tell she's feeling a little sensitive on this one. And then just to kind of finish it, I'm just gonna do a bit of stippling in there. Great. Okay, looks good. Now I'm not dragging my needles back and forth here. You'll get a really strong line with the concentration of color. That's not going to look realistic. So just be careful of making sure that you're not using, it's actually called side making to go back and forth and you don't wanna be doing that. All right, just a little bit in this area here. So this guy here, because it's a little larger, I'm gonna just very gently do some wispy passes like this. Each time I check, guys, because you wanna really make sure you have an understanding of how the color is going in on each different spot because it truly will change and it really has to do with how much flesh and meat and bone are in the area that you're working on. This is why wireless is so nice because I can literally just be, you know, bopping around here and not dragging a cord all over her and myself. So this procedure is honestly really super fast. I'm gonna have her done in probably 20 minutes and if we do need to see her again, it will be in 10 weeks. So I like to kind of hit that two and a half month mark. That is actually how long 
camouflage ink takes to stabilize in the skin. So meaning it's completely healed and not going to change. And that's really important with this type of work because we wanna know our exact result before we go in there and start putting more color in.